Hey guys, I'm LSFM and welcome back to yet another FM23 tutorial video. Yeah, these videos tend to do um, the best on my channel, so I'm going to make quite a few of them and, you know, hopefully they help you along on your FM journey. Uh, I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank you for your support on the uh, Star video. It's been about two days since I, last, since I uploaded it and it's got... I think it's like 92 views now so for a channel of this size that's, that's already like a decent number so thank you very much for all your support anyway let's get on to this new tutorial today we're going to talk about training now i know many of you who play this game are probably guilty of just never really clicking on this tab very much and then just like setting all of the general training all the individual training to your um assistant manager trust me i've all been there myself included when i first started playing this game i saw all this and you know it was complicated i avoided it on purpose because i just felt felt like you know if i changed any of it it would just have a very very bad effect on my team but today i'm here to tell you why it is worth paying attention to your training and it's very much worth doing so the first thing i want you to do is this go to your staff tab go to responsibilities training and i want you to take control of general and individual training make sure you take control of both if you've got if you've got fm open right now just as you're watching this video please make sure you do this because it is scary but trust me it is 100 percent worth doing and make sure you like and subscribe by the way before i forget i always forget to say that so make sure you do that let's get on with the tutorial so we're going to do this video in basically two sections where I um, talk about general training and then also individual training. I might like subdivide them a bit more, I'm not sure yet, but these are basically the two like key areas of training, the general and the individual. Uh, before I go on, make sure you set your primary train tactic to the one you are currently using. Yes, this is very important. I'll explain why in a second. So as you can see, this is my tactic, 4 to 3 one uh, wide, and this is what I've got selected as my primary trained tactic. So make sure you do that. Um, so the default schedules that your assistant puts together are um, quite good but they ignore one main thing that is the most important part of training for me and if you are to take anything away from this video please make sure it is this um, training is absolutely essential for your match preparation and you will find if you if you start paying attention to this your team's performances will greatly improve as well as your tactical familiarity this is what this bar means here this is why i needed to need you to set your primary train tactic to your actual tactic tactic that you're using this bar is incredibly important because the you know the closer it is to full you know the better your team are going to perform because obviously obviously they're going to know their roles a lot better than if the familiarity bar is quite low because because i do my training all of these bars are full up and position role and duty that comes under individual training so i'll show you that later now if you go onto the calendar itself and go onto the training you will find a whole section of drills to do with match preparation um ideally you want to do at least three or four of these a week i'd say now i do appreciate that you know setting a whole week's worth of training is quite a daunting task because you don't or you obviously don't want to just have match preparation in your um like training week that would be a bit overkill but as you can see the uh match prep literally focuses on the next match and you know how your team are going to like set up tactically for that as you can see it all it literally focuses entirely on tactical familiarity team cohesion and that is absolutely essential because that just means that your team is going to be much much better prepared for a match if you hadn't set this then you know your team your tactical familiarity would be a lot lower which is obviously not going to help your team very much um, so because this is quite daunting I do have custom schedules that um, basically you can plug in every single week using this button you can see custom schedules I have for uh, the training we're going to talk about today is primarily just uh, training for like in the season pre-season training is a bit different uh, I'll do a separate video on that now I'm not going to take credit for these schedules because um, they were made by the YouTuber Zealand yes I'm probably sure you know him he's the biggest FM YouTuber there is I'm pretty sure so I'm not going to take credit for this uh, I'll leave a link to his video where he made these in the description below he did make them for last year but I'm confident that they still work on this game I've been using them in every single one of my saves this year and it's really helped so what I'm going to do is run you through the aim of the schedules and then how I set them up each week. So this is the schedule for like a one match game week. So if you're not in, if you're not in Europe, you usually have a lot of these, you know, this is the most common one that I find. So the focus of this training is basically injury prevention, development of your players and building tactical familiarity and preparing your team for matches. So, you know, 
there needs to be a balance. We can't have all these intensity bars that we fall because that would literally destroy your team, basically. Um, so basically, these bars just show like the workload on each um, training unit. Uh, attacking there's three units goalkeeping defending and attacking you can just find them all here um so it just it just basically means that the kind of attributes that the game is like training on the players so someone like kai havertz he's an attacker so we want him in the attacking unit because we want his attacking attributes to be trained on the other hand someone like wesley Fofana, who's a center back we want him to be training in his defensive attributes so uh we want him in the in the defensive training unit for midfielders, I find that it just depends on like the role you're playing them in your team. Like Jude Bellingham, uh, I'm playing him as a box to box midfielder. I wanted to work on his attacking attributes. I wanted to be better going forward because we were a very attacking orientated team. So I put him in the attacking unit. Uh, someone like Conor Gallagher, he's already okay going forward. I wanted to work on his defending because he's only got 10 marking and some of his other defending attributes are quite weak. So I want him in the, in the defensive unit. So anyway, as you can see here in this schedule, we uh, focus on attacking movement, teamwork, match preview, match tactics. All of these four are um, match prep. So they all work on, you know, the tactical familiarity, upcoming match, how the team's going to play, team cohesion as well, which is very important because you know, team cohesion is in a dynamic screen. It's just how your team plays together. So if it's very good, the team is success, the team's collective mental state has been, has seen a, an improvement player positioning is going to be better so basically the higher cohesion the better your team's going to play as a unit obviously football's a team sport you need the team to function adequately and team cohesion is you know your indicator of how well that's going to happen on the pitch another key thing is match review and team bonding after every single match match review is just another way of increasing cohesion and familiarity make sure you set this after every single match that you play it is essential because you know this is just another free way of increasing your familiarity Team bonding as well, it not only increases team cohesion, focuses on the upcoming match of teamwork and increases the happiness of your team. So if you want morale to go up, set this for sure. Also, it, it reduces fatigue, so it's an even better way of, you know, keeping players fit after the match. Because we've got the recovery thing here, which doesn't really focus on any attributes, obviously. It just, it just reduces injury risk, which is why this schedule is so good, because you have recovery after every single match, which makes it so your players stand a better chance of, you know, recovering their condition and being fit enough for the next game. Now the rest of these towards the um, earlier part of the week focus on player development. These are just the best um, drills that Zealand found to be, you know, the best at improving a player's att attributes. Um, so we've got overall, overall defending outfield, you know. Um, in terms of attacking overlap and defending from the front, I don't do these for every single week. They, they kind of complement each other, I find, because the attacking overlap, despite being a, an attacking drill, primarily focuses on the, the defensive unit because it's focusing on defending defensive players overlapping attackers to you know, create chances and whatever so this is why i do defending from the front because that focuses on the attacking unit which is even though it's part of the defending section it still focuses on the attacking unit because you know it's focusing on that like, pressing uh you know the opposition's back line and the, se uh, the secondary focus is the defensive um so uh, if i had like two weeks in a row where it's just a one match game week i'd probably do this i I'd just select a different type of defensive training and also a different type of attacking training so you can see now the focus for this attacking training is on the attacking unit and for the defensive uh drill it is for the, the defensive unit unit it's just a way of balancing out the uh week because you don't i wouldn't want to have both of these focusing on the uh uh, attacking or defensive unit you might find as well if you, if you do that your players might get a bit annoyed at you that oh then their training unit is not getting enough attention this is that's another key thing actually you can go to the, the overview section look at training happiness and you can see the players that are you know how the players are feeling about the training um so you know there's loads of different things here i wouldn't worry too much about it uh the individual training not not being beneficial is one i'll cover in a bit when we talk about individual training So now I'm going to give you like a proper example of what I do every single week. You know, training doesn't have to be a daunting task. I, I usually set it for the upcoming week after the end of a, like a week. So if I was like actually doing this properly, I'd set the training after the, after the Watford game. So in this case, I, this is a one match game week. So I go to custom schedule, select one match per week. And I make sure I set in my uh, match review because that is incredibly important. So you can see the overall, overall one on ones is not there because... Um, We've lost today because the Watford game's on the Sunday. That's okay. I usually just put it back in. I usually, I always start with that one. 
Um, I just cut out, I just cut out the defending outfield match tactics one. It's fine. I usually do that. And the match prep that I choose is dependent is dependent on the opposition. So we're playing Southampton at home. Southampton are currently well, they're 11th in the league. So we should be winning that game fairly easily. So I want the team to focus on attacking movement for this game because you know we want to focus on breaking them down. The team that's probably going to defend for their lives for the majority of the 90 minutes. We want to focus on our attacking prowess in this match. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, another key thing is set pieces. You know, if you train at least one of these a week then your team will be better from set pieces, which can also be like quite a difference maker in matches. You know, it's, if you're struggling to break a team down, a set piece could be an easy way of getting a goal if you train them properly, if you set them properly. I could probably do a, a separate tutorial about set pieces, actually, because they are, in my opinion, like completely worth setting up. So if you set well, at least one of these every week, then that's good. If I was playing against like Man City away, I might focus on defending free kicks because, um, you know, we are probably going to be conceding a lot of fouls against City to try and stop their like attacking moves. So if you can focus on defending free kicks, we limit their chances of scoring. But because against Southampton, I feel like we're going to dominate the match. I will set attacking corners because we're probably going to have a lot of corners. So with that done, we can we can move on to a two-match game week. There's a training um, schedule for this as well, and this is what it looks like. So. I wouldn't put both of these as attacking movement. You know, you may think Crystal Palace and Aston Villa, two winnable games to Chelsea, yes. But there's no point um, doing two like defensive shapes or two attacking movements every week because it, it applies a bonus for the entire week, I'm pretty sure. So doing two defensive shapes, for example, would be a bit overkill. I, I do like this though, because away games in FM are, and then real football as well, are typically a lot harder than home games. So, you know, just by focusing on defensive shape doesn't mean that we're not focusing at all on our attacking. Our team is good enough to attack still, but it just means we're a bit more defensively solid against a team that may feel more confident playing at home. Um, also in this case, because we did attack and overlap last week, I probably just select a different one, so attacking patient, and I can set, I don't know, defending disengaged. Just make sure if you set um, a trend drill that focuses primarily on the attacking, the complementary defensive one also should focus on the defensive. You don't want both. You don't want both drills to focus on attacking because that's overkill. Also, you may notice that this uh, particular week has two recoveries at the end of the week. You can only do one team bonding session a week. You can see that all on the extracurricular, you can only do one team bonding a week. If I try and do it again over here, it's greyed out. You can only do one a week. Community, out community outreach is good, but the thing it doesn't do, it doesn't like reduce the fatigue of your team, nor does it increase happiness. So I find it's not really worth doing unless, you know, you're doing pre-season or just have like a free slot. So because team bonding can only be used once, I do two recovery sessions in a two match game week because they're playing two matches in this week. The fatigue is going to be a lot higher. So if you can have two of these in, that's even better. And don't forget your match review as well. So anyway, the takeaways from general training is you just want like a range of things. There's, there's definitely drills that are better than others, but I still like a range in what I tell my team to do just to make sure we're covering all bases in terms of their development. So I'm just going to like run you through like the ones that I usually tend to pick and the ones that I tend to avoid. Um, so for attacking, I choose all of these. They're all quite good in their own way. Um, defensive uh, side of the game, I only choose these three. These these three here, just they don't train as many attributes as the other ones do. And as you can see, there's the more attributes selected than all of these ones. So that means that these three are not really worth doing. So. If you, when you're selecting a, de a defending drill for the week, only do defending engaged, defending disengaged, or defending from the front, end, depending on what the attacking one is. For technical, I only tend to choose chance creation, just because chance creation is one of the most important you know, technical skills in football, I find. And also, another key reason is that happiness is increased. For every single one of the rest of them, it's only slightly increased. And happiness and morale is very, very important in this game. Okay, other than play from the back, but this focuses on the defensive unit, and you know, we don't want that really. We want the range, we don't want to just focus on this. So, chance creation is definitely the only one that I choose from there. I tend to avoid these two, they just they focus on tactical familiarity, but we don't need to focus on that because we have other training drills in the week that focuses on tactical familiarity. Goalkeeping, the best one is one on ones because it increases the uh, most wide range of attributes. Um, the most important ones I find, so definitely one-on-ones. Uh, just a sign that you may be wondering what um, this means, attributes, individual roles. That's basically training the other players in like, the role you've got them selected. It's part of the individual training, so I'll show you in a bit. 
Set pieces, um, I tend to choose all of these. So if you're playing in a cup final, I choose penalties because there's always a chance there of the game going to penalties. And, you know, if you select this, the players may have a chance of doing better in their penalties, I suppose. But as you can see, every single one of these focuses on the upcoming match, which is another like key reason why they are very, very important, because they give you a bonus to this particular area for the next match. Physical, I avoid these three unless it's pre-season. You'll see in the video I make on pre-season. These ones are slightly different, but obviously you're going to want a recovery session sometimes. And, you know, I don't, I don't usually leave rest spots, but if you fancy that, you can do that. An extracurricular I already spoke about, team bonding is the one I usually go for, uh, community outreach I tend to avoid. So yeah, anyway, that's that's basically general training. I'll um, leave links to the uh, training schedules down in the description. Just remember, I do not take credit for these at all. It was Zealand that came up with these, so make sure you go watch his video about it. Another key part of um, injury prevention is this your rest page so this just sets like the intensity of the training for the entire team this is what i tend to usually go for you don't want players training when their uh, condition is very low so i set that to no pitch or gym work half intensity training for if their condition is fair normal for good and double intensity for excellent you know you can reduce it say you have like a lot of too much game weeks in the boat i tend to reduce it to normal intensity because you don't want your players training really really hard because that will just make them really tired but if you have a load of like one match game weeks in the row i usually set it to double you just want to get the most out of your training you don't want to be wasting wasting weeks not doing only like half ass training i suppose um and you get a review a training review every single friday in the game and it gives you like feedback on how intense the training was let me try and find it actually uh training was it training Tra there we go training week in review so i've had my training set to double so that means that the training load is average you, you want it to show this message basically because that just shows you're doing the right amount of training see no injuries as well which just shows how important injury prevention is in the game uh you can see like the areas that um your training has focused on for the upcoming games um so you want as many of these as you can don't worry about this that much your training rules should be adequate to cover a lot of bases uh for match preparation uh and also another key thing is always praise players for doing well in training it just increases morale so well done jude bellingham you're doing very well in training jude bellingham um you know morale boost from praising him and trevor chalaber um you know, just tell him his shit and, you know, hopefully he'll back up his ideas. This section coaches, it's a bit complicated. I tend to avoid it really, to be honest. But basically you want the coach workloads to all be light because if they, if it says heavy, then the training's not going to be as effective. So, you know, I just could check back on this screen periodically, edit coach assignments, and then basically just ask assistant to assign and it reassigns all the training um this, the assistant usually does a good job so you, you just want all of these to be average or light never heavy so just always check back pre periodically ask the assistant to assign now we can move on to perhaps the more interesting side of the training individual training so this is where you know you can set players tell players to just work on the specific parts of the game the general training may not otherwise cover uh, so you can assign traits give them additional focus develop their weaker foot um anyway so what i tend to do is i always ignore this thing because basically this just means he's training in the role that he plays in the team and that will increase his um familiarity in his role which is actually a key part of the familiarity section you can see it's usually the one that you can't get um up to fluid as easily as the other ones because all the other ones can be affected by training but position role and duty is more affected by the individual training um so i usually just leave this blank which basically means that tammy abraham is going to be training as an advanced forward in this training uh you can also make him train in, in a different position so if i wanted him to become a winger for whatever reason i could just tell him to do that um, and that means over time he'll, become, he'll, he'll gain like familiarity in that certain role and he just allows players to learn different positions. As you can see, for someone like Kai Havertz, he's accomplished in his position role and duty because he's training as an attacking midfielder, um, which is the position he plays in the team. Now, the additional focus is basically, you know, uh, you just you just look at a player, you know, you can highlight their attributes, you know, make sure you, you go on their... Uh, profile and highlight their attributes for their role and just you just want to train a weakness really like Kai Havertz is very very good in this game but passing is 
um, an attribute for his position and his role that is not as high as you'd expect for someone of his ability. So this is why I've set his uh, additional focus to passing. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you set, it just just honestly, just look at the player and just think about any weaknesses that, that they might have and just set an additional focus for that particular role. So Wesley Fofana, I want him to play ball playing defender, but he's only got 12 passing. So he's training in his um, passing for additional focus. You may get this message sometimes in the training report saying he's not happy with his training. He doesn't think that the um, training drill is beneficial. So I'd usually change that unless you can see noticeable improvement in, in the attributes that the additional focus is, focus, focus is on. So you, as you can see, his vision and technique are going up because of this additional focus. It says he's benefited from the individual training focus. So I'm not going to change it until um, I see no more improvement. Someone like Ben Chilwell here, uh, he's also not very happy with his individual training and it's not giving me the message that he's benefiting from it. So I could just take it off and put it on something else. I don't know, let's do uh, defensive positioning. Especially for young players as well, you can look to assign traits onto them. Um, so, you know, your, your um, backroom team sometimes give you suggestions on what traits to put on. Usually they're quite good with their uh, suggestions. Right, let's assign a trait to Kai Havertz. So, um, his finishing and technique are quite good, which makes him prime candidate to learn the traits. Um, try first time shots. There we go. So, it's a trait that suits natural goal scorers. Here's a natural goal scorer. Try his first time shots. Uh, so these traits can really, really help your players, you know, just utilize their skills a lot better. Like someone like Kai Havertz, who's a natural goal scorer, if he can take first time shots, he can catch the keeper out, he can score more goals. It's all like that, you know, it's just experiment with it, you know. Just like always look to add traits to players. Bear in mind if you add when you add traits, it like it takes up a chunk of their current ability so they won't improve as much attribute wise but it's usually it's all right never put traits on players who are really really young but maybe when they're 18 and onwards you can start putting traits on another thing is if you want to say uh, additional focuses for young players let's go for someone like, i don't know tyree george uh when a player is younger you want to mainly focus on their um physical attributes first because that's the things that improve like the, the quickest um in young players, so for someone like Tyreek George, maybe you want to play him out wide. Endurance, he's only got 10 work rate, 12 stamina, so definitely focus on that. And then as a player gets older, then switch to focusing on technicals. So focus on physical first of young players, then move to technical, and then when they're in like their mid-20s, you can work on their mentals, because mentals are the attributes that um, improve over time and don't really stop improving uh, during a player's career. So key takeaways for individual training, uh, set position role and duty to the just just leave it blank unless you want to train them in a different role than what they're currently playing because if, if you leave it blank you know it it fills up this bar here position role and duty which is very important it just basically trains the player in the current position and role that he plays in in your tactic which is just the best thing that you want uh, look at look at any weaknesses they may have in their game focus on focus on this using the additional focus if they get unhappy you can change it, um, but only change it if there's no noticeable improvement. Add traits to players as you see fit. You know, just just go, just experiment with this. Just go through the list, find ones that you may you may find that actually benefit your staff. Usually, have give like a good idea about which ones you should put on. If you, if you've really overstepped the mark or really chosen one that doesn't suit the player at all, they will tell you. So don't set it. Make sure their individual training workload is not high and heavy because that will increase the risk of injuries. Medium is fine, light is fine, but uh, heavy is not fine. So anyways, that ends the tutorial here. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And yeah, I hope this tutorial tutorial was useful. Again, for the final time, I do not take credit for any of the schedules I showed you in the video. They are Zealand's, but I will uh, still upload them to Steam and put them in the description, hopefully. And yeah, training is complicated. Just just try and you see if your team's performances improve, you know. Uh, these schedules are the best that I find at in improving your team's performances and also making sure that your players develop rapidly as well. So thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.